April 28, 1945. Over the East China Sea, Lieutenant Commander James Patterson guided his PB for Y. Two privateer through calm skies at 15,000 feet. Far below, radar blips marked the location of Japanese ships his crew would never see. In the bomb bay hung two ASM men, two BAT missiles, silent, autonomous weapons that would strike without warning and vanish before the enemy knew they were under attack. These weren't just bombs. They were thinking weapons, the world's first fully automated guided missiles used in combat, developed by the U.S. National Bureau of Standards under Dr. Hugh L. Dryden. The BAT missile was revolutionary. Unlike German glide bombs that needed human guidance, the BAT used its own onboard radar and analog computing to find and destroy targets on its own. It was a fire-and-forget weapon, a leap into a new era of warfare. Weighing 1,880 pounds with a 10-foot wingspan, the BAT carried a 1,000-pound warhead. Its internal radar could detect ships from 20 miles away. Inside were vacuum tubes, analog computers, and servo motors that allowed it to steer itself all the way to impact. In 1945, this was a technological miracle. The BAT's development began in 1942 as the U.S. Navy sought a way to strike enemy ships from beyond anti-aircraft range. The project brought together top minds from Bell Labs, universities, and government labs. And unlike Germany which struggled to hand-build small batches of high-tech weapons. American industry mass-produced over 3,000 BAT missiles. Only about 420 saw combat before the war ended, but that production scale signaled something far more important, an industrial mindset that could reshape warfare itself. The BAT's combat debut came in April 1945, and like many experimental weapons, the early missions were plagued with technical issues. But on April 28th, VPB-109 scored the first successful strike, sinking a Japanese patrol vessel in Balikpapan Harbor. The missile had flown nine miles after release, with the bomber already headed home. The Japanese sailors never saw it coming. No engine noise, no plane in sight, just an explosion from the sky. It wasn't just destruction. It was psychological warfare. Japan's military was built around traditional combat, visual engagements, torpedoes, ship-to-ship -ship battles. Their Type 93 Long Lance torpedo was one of the best in the world. But while Japan refined existing technologies, the U.S. was inventing entirely new categories of weapons. Miniaturized radar, analog guidance, automated control systems, concept Japan not only lacked, but couldn't even fully understand. Capture American radar systems baffled Japanese engineers, who could identify individual parts, but not how they worked together. This wasn't just a technological gap. It was a philosophical divide. American weapons were standardized and mass-produced. Japanese equipment was often artisanal, hand-built and hard to replace. In that difference lay the future of warfare. The bat wasn't just a bomb, it was a system. Combat effectiveness remained limited. Of 100 bat missiles fired, only a few hit targets. Three confirmed sinkings, one damaged escort ship. The missiles struggled with radar confusion near land, weather interference and electronics failures. But even this modest success terrified the Japanese Navy. They had no countermeasures, no understanding of the threat, and no way to fight back. Ships were struck without warning. Survivors described feeling helpless and bewildered. Death came from an invisible enemy that thought for itself. Where America embraced automation, Japan doubled down on human sacrifice. The kamikaze, essentially human-guided missiles, became Japan's response to American technology. Vice Admiral Takajiro Nishi summed it up, We cannot match American science, but we have warriors willing to die. The contrast between the bat and the kamikaze perfectly captured the diverging paths of two nations at war. Automation versus ideology, machine precision versus spiritual resolve. While the bat never lived up to its battlefield promise, 
it foreshadowed the future. Post-war testing continued until 1948, but the missile was pulled from service by the early 1950s. Its analog guidance was too fragile, its electronics too unreliable, its radar too easily confused. But the program was never about immediate results. It was about proof of concept. Every American missile that followed, from the Sidewinder to the Tomahawk, carries the bat's DNA. More importantly, the bat raised questions we still haven't fully answered. When a machine selects and kills a target on its own, who bears more responsibility? What does it mean to be a warrior when death can be delivered by an algorithm? What happens when war becomes less about human courage and more about computational efficiency? The Japanese sailors who died without ever seeing their attacker were the first casualties of automated warfare. Their confusion and fear prefigured the experience of soldiers in every war since, facing smart bombs, cruise missiles, and drones. The bat missile marked the end of one kind of war and the start of another. It didn't win the Pacific War. That came from overwhelming American production, logistical dominance, and ultimately the atomic bomb. But the bats show what the next war would look like. Not masses of troops or heroic dogfights, but sensors, circuits, and code. Today, we live in a world shaped by the bats' legacy. Every time a drone strikes from thousands of miles away, or a missile locks onto a target without human input, we're seeing the shadow of that first autonomous weapon. It sank only three ships, but it launched a revolution. 